Hello and welcome to episode 40 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today's highlights include the Beatles' first performance at the Cavern Club, their first TV appearance in the United States, and their first recording session in a British studio other than the EMIs. It will be a long show, packed with information. Let's start with the historic live event happened on the 9th of February 1961. The Beatles made their debut on the stage of the Cavern Club in Liverpool, the first of many live appearances. It wasn't a complete debut, naturally. John Lennon and Paul McCartney had already played the Cavern Club as the Quarrymen some three years before, but it was a first for George Harrison and for Stuart Sutcliffe. The band was rounded up by Pete Best. Warren advertised this 1 to 2 pm lunchtime concert went pretty well, and the band received £5 for their work, about £112 in 2020 money. Let's stay at the Cavern Club for another triple feature in 1962. Today, the Beatles performed a lunchtime and an evening gig in the cellar venue before rushing to the Technical College Hall in Birkenhead for a spot in the first of three February dancing nights in that venue. Meanwhile, during the day, George Martin, head of artist and repertoire at Parfum Record, and Sid Coleman, general manager of Artmore and Beachwood Publishing, met in London to discuss, among other things, Coleman's impression on the Beatles. As detailed in episode 39 of What A Fab Day, it was through Coleman that manager Brian Epstein had booked the meeting with Martin, and it was natural that Martin inquired about the matter with him. In 1963, the Beatles performed their seventh night of the Helen Shapiro Package Tour, this time at the Empire Theatre in Sunderland. It was their final show for the first part of the tour. Another historic first in 1964, with the Beatles' first appearance at the Ed Sullivan Show. The day had started with more rehearsals at the CBS's Studio 50 in New York City, with George Harrison still being stuck in bed with high fever, and a camera dress rehearsal completed with Rhodey Neil Aspinall literally standing in for George. There was a concrete risk for George to miss the performance, but he did manage to join his bandmates in the afternoon, when the now completed Beatles lineup taped a performance that would be screened on the 23rd of February between 8 and 9 pm Eastern Standard Time, playing Twist and Shout, Please Please Me, and I Want to Hold Your Hand. The filming was a slightly complicated affair featuring a different audience than the live one that would have witnessed their live debut on US television later in the day, and a different studio setup. The film slot also included a saddened Ed Sullivan presenting the band, saying, All of us on the show are so darned sorry, and sincerely sorry, that this is the third and thus our last current show with the Beatles, because these youngsters from Liverpool, England, and their conduct over here, not only as fine professional singers but as a group of fine youngsters, will leave an imprint of everyone over here who's met them. Later in the evening, it came the first taste of the real deal, live. Between 8 and 9 pm Eastern Standard Time, with 728 screaming teenagers in the studio, and, according to the Nielsen ratings, 23,240,000 households, for about 73 million people connected to CBS, the Ed Sullivan Show went on air. It was the world record for the largest TV audience ever. The Beatles performed three songs at the beginning of the show, All My Loving, Till There Was You, and She Loves You, and two in the second part, I Saw Her Standing There and I Want to Hold Your Hand. During Till There Was You, each Beatle was shown separately on the screen, with their Christian name overimpressed to the image. When it came to John Lennon, his name was accompanied by the caption, Sorry girls, he's married. Their slick performance, 
was what made the Beatles in the United States. Two curiosities from the Beatles anthology book. First, a comment by Ringo. TV had such bad sound equipment, it still has today usually, but then it was really bad, that we would tape our rehearsals and then go up and mess with the dials in the control booth. We got it all set up with the engineer there and then we went off for a break. The story has it that while we were out, the cleaner came in to clean the room and the console, thought, what are all these chalk marks? And wiped them all off. So our plans just went out the window. We had a really hasty time trying to get the sound right. The second comment is from George. I've heard that while the show was on, there were no reported crimes, or very few. When the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan, even the criminals had a rest for 10 minutes. Moving to 1967, yet another first. The Beatles had their first EMI recording session in UK not held at the Abbey Road Studios, which were all booked up for the day. This meant that the Fabs had to work and record three takes or their fixing a hole at the Region Sound Studio in Tottenham Court Road. The session still saw producer George Martin at the helm, thanks to his freelancer status. The rest of the usual recording team, though, being made up of VMI employees, was substituted by the region staff, with Adrian Ibertson acting as sound engineer. The basic track saw Paul on harpsichord and voice, Ringo Starr on drums and maracas, and John on bass. George overdubbed the double-track guitar solo with his Fender Stratocaster and added some backing vocals. The session was also memorable for a guest brought in by Paul McCartney, a guy who had rung the bell of his home, claiming to be Jesus Christ. Paul gave him a cup of tea and heard him out. Often, the most insistent fans had some insecurity or emotional breakdown going on, and if they were funny or non-threatening, the Beatles tended to talk and comfort them a little. Since it was time to go to the session, Paul decided to bring this Jesus Christ with him. In 1970, Ringo Starr continued working on his Sentimental Journey album, with a 2.30 to 7 pm session at the EMI Studios. A quick demo of Whispering Grass was recorded and handed to Rod Goodwin to write an orchestral arrangement for it. Then, Ringo overdubbed his vocal part on Have I Told You Lately That I Love You, arranged by Elmer Bernstein. The orchestral accompaniment had been recorded in the United States on the 3rd of February. The work was completed mixing the track in stereo. This concludes this episode of What A Fab Day. Please, Remember to visit www.simonmas.com support and, if you want, make a small donation to help me continue to put out the best material I can. If you all gave just a penny, um, no, that would probably buy me not even a cup of coffee at this stage, but it would still warm my heart and make me feel that you care. Even better, publicize the show on your social media and with your friends. Spread that Beatles love! In the episode description, apart from the usual link to the bibliography of the podcast, I have selected two little videos showing you a glimpse of what the Beatles' debut on The Ed Sullivan Show meant, plus a slightly ironic third. I'll let you decide which is which. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.